Okay, guys, welcome back to Guitar Rabbi. And I said that we were uh, going to be reviewing this guitar right here. The EVH Wolfgang Standard. Let me give you guys a little bit of history of my history with this guitar, first of all. Now, when I first started playing electric guitar back in 1995, 96, probably 96, I had a um, an Ibanez RX series Stratocaster guitar. And Eddie Van Halen was the reason I ended up getting into guitar. After seeing him in concert and just blown away by everything with that band in 1995, I wanted to learn to play guitar. And so my parents had given me a uh, Fender acoustic. And then I ended up, uh, I was working at a golf course and I ended up buying a Ibanez uh, RX series guitar. And I was looking between that and the Fender Squire. And the thing that I learned really quickly, if you're going to play rock music is what they told me. You got to have humbuckers, not the single coils that are in the Fenders. So they suggested to me the Ibanez because they were an Ibanez seller over there. They had like two companies or three companies that they sold. They sold Gibson, they sold Ibanez, and they sold Fender. That was it. But they knew that a person starting out, they'd be able to you know, make the sale on that of an Ibanez. And so that Ibanez, I played for many, many years and even started to put together other guitars from various parts and all that stuff, sometimes successfully, sometimes not so much. And I remember there were a couple of music places I would go into in Hickory, North Carolina that had the PV version of this guitar. And I knew exactly what it was because I had seen the Can't Stop Loving You music video thousands upon thousands of times because I had the VHS tape of all of their music videos. And so this guitar right here, and plus this is the same guitar, was the one that Eddie played on stage when I saw them in Charlotte, North Carolina. And... The thing is that every time that you would see one of these in one of those places, it would be in a, like a glass case, could not touch it. And if you wanted to even pick it up, you had to have the intention of buying it. And they would actually ask you at that time, you know, show me that you have the money for it for this. So this was like a guitar that was out of reach. It was the Holy Grip because it was like four thousand dollars at the time, if memory serves me correct. The PV version of this and then i learned you know many years later that eddie ended up going to fender and all that stuff and i was like okay you know the four thousand dollar guitar that i'll never be able to afford <laughs> and so when eddie ended up passing away and i said i want to get back into playing a little bit of guitar you know as a nice little hobby maybe produce some stuff some some albums and all that stuff you know because we have the technology now to do it from at home which is something that we really didn't have. I had an old reel-to-reel -reel recorder and some of the old microphones, but still, it wasn't the same thing as you know studios in the 1970s, and plus not knowing how to operate a reel-to-reel -reel was not the same thing as you know the 1990s of not knowing how to operate that equipment. <laughs> so basically, I would end up just plugging the microphone into this big recording tape deck that was about this big and all that stuff and uh <laughs> never messed with the reel to reel because every time i tried to do it the the reel would fly off and so but nowadays we got you know the computers and all that stuff and i see so many people just you know making youtube videos where they're out there going and playing and they're just using basic technology that i use for my radio show and i'm like wow that's that's amazing and then another thing we're going to be reviewing in the next uh, week or so is the um, the Zoom G3. I know I, I covered some of this very same stuff in the first video that we did for the Guitar Rabbi series. I, I, I realize that. Don't think I have dementia. Okay, I, I remember that I've covered a lot of that. But, <laughs> but the thing is that when Eddie passed away, I was like, I wonder, you know, I think you can find good deals online. 
what this guitar is going for now, the Fender version, or maybe even the PVs had ended up going down a price or something like that. And I was shocked to see this very guitar for $6.99 on every website like Sweetwater, Reverb, the same places that I know are reputable because I buy all my radio equipment from those from those places. They're selling guitars too. And so I ended up talking with my fiance and I said, honey, is it okay with you if I put $50 away of my paycheck every week to save up to get one of these? And I said, I said, you know, by February or so, I should have enough saved up. And she said, sure, if that's what you want to do, you know, go and go and have at it. I have the most supportive fiance in the, on the face of the planet. I really do in all honesty. And so I noticed that I started to come close to making, to having as much as I need in my savings account. And I, I, I was just, I was just looking, I was like, man, mister, should I go ahead and do it now? Should I wait? And I go and I look and all the websites are saying, we're not going to have any more in, in stock until, until February. So I was like, okay, well, I'll just wait until February and I'll order myself a chipson, you know, so I could go and teach the guitar lessons and all that stuff at the guitar Academy. And so I go and I ordered the 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 uh, chips and it hadn't come in yet. It's a uh, it's a uh, uh, slash appetite for destruction Les Paul, and it hasn't even shipped yet. You know, and that's kind of how it works with DH Gate and all that stuff. You got to wait a while for it. And I ended up seeing online somebody local who had this guitar right here for four hundred and fifty dollars. The very model that I wanted for $450 as opposed to $700. So I frantically go and message this, this guy. And I said, and I said, you know what? If you can bring it to my work, I will give you $30 extra because he lived about 30 minutes away. The deal was made. And I have never been able to touch this guitar because like, again, previously, previously, these things were in cases at the, you know, at the, at the uh, places that sold guitars and they, they needed to make sure that you had the money in order to pay for it. So you weren't going to run out the door with it, especially, you know, being, you know, 16, 17, $18, you can't trust those kids, you know? And so I, so I understand the mentality. I really do. And so he goes and brings it into the shop after a couple of customers had just left opens up the case and the thing I always end up hearing about that you guys also end up hearing about is this fretboard, this roasted maple neck fretboard, just the smoothest darn neck on any guitar that you will ever put your hands on. And it was almost like touching the Holy grail in many ways, you know? And so, I ended up going and giving giving him the money, and you know, in between times at work, I'm trying to remember to relearn how to play and all this stuff. The thing you may not know is the whole time that I've been talking, this volume knob has been all the way up. The volume knob on the guitar has been all the way up, and yes, my amp is actually active, and it is running through loopback right now into the computer. Need proof of it? See, there you go. It's almost like this guitar has a built-in noise gate. I don't know if it's the guitar or whether it's the uh, PV um, Viper VIP2 that it is that I have, that I have this running into the computer and all that stuff. I don't know if it's this. This is the first time that I've ever gone and uh, hooked it up into the computer and i was actually very surprised at how easy that was you know i thought there had to be some sort of software or something like that i have to install on a mac you don't have to do that it's it's it's, it's wonderful and so the thing i ended up doing is as soon as i got home i said now for many of you who are have taken a break from guitar for a while have never had a floyd rose tremolo you know it was never had a Floyd Rose tremolo on this guitar. I don't have the whammy bar on it right now. I have it within the case. 
Um, but with that, I will go and tell you about the first issue that I ended up having by because of the fact that I've never in my life had a Floyd Rose trim. And so, as you know, at the top of this guitar, you have the locking nut. Okay. And so in order to now the, the gentleman that had this guitar previously didn't like it because of the fact he's more of a Gibson guy likes the wider neck. So if you like the wider necks, you're not going to care for this guitar too much. But um, he had it tuned to drop D. Okay, I don't play a lot of stuff in drop D. So I wanted it in standard tuning. I plan on putting a D tuna into this thing. If I ever want to go and do drop D. Um, so I had to go in and retune this thing. And I watched some tutorials online about how to do this with a Floyd Rose. And so I go and I track down uh, an Allen wrench to go and unscrew all of these and all this stuff on the locking nut. And I ended up stripping one of them. One of them was just on there way too tight. It was the middle one at the time, and I, I think the middle one's to the side now. But uh, it was the middle one, and I had a heck of a time. I was like, I'm not going to break this guitar. But I ended up going and getting it off finally after about a half an hour. And I realized really quickly with the Floyd Rose why it is that you want to start in the middle in terms of your tuning as opposed to, you know, like we're most of us are accustomed to starting with the E string, then go into the A, then go into the D, then the G, then the B, then the uh, high E string. Uh, you, because of the tension and all that stuff, you do definitely want to start with the two middle strings, the D string and the G string. You want to start with those. And so I learned that really, really quickly. And I realized as well that, um, when tuning this, you want to make sure that it's just slightly flat because as soon as you put this down, it's going to go slightly sharp from the point in which it is that you tuned it. Okay, so I finally got that going and I was like, okay, time to go and plug this into the Viper. I'm not used to amps like the Viper, okay? I'm not used to having all these different settings and presets and all that stuff, but the... uh the, to the the preset that I have on there now is one of the ones that was programmed in it. And I actually like that chorus effect. You know, that sounds really good, I think. I really like that setting. I really like that. Um, but let me go and see if I can choose one of the overdrive settings here. One second. Sounds like we got some chorus in there as well. Yeah, there's definitely some chorus in there. But even, even with the gain on, you hear a slight buzz, but not much from, from these humbuckers. That's something that I'm not used to because I remember my old um, my old uh, uh, Ibanez. That thing constantly had sound coming out of it. It doesn't matter if I was touching it or not. It constantly had sound coming out of it. So these EVH, um, these EVH, humbucker pickups are just absolutely amazing. And again, like I said, the fretboard feels really good. Um, and considering that I haven't played in 14 years, um, relearning how to play, the thing is that I can say that, uh, you know, the calluses are coming in and all that stuff. So, you know, I do about a half an hour at a time whenever I get a chance and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, I got to say, I am blown away with this guitar. 
I am absolutely blown away with it. And um, the question that many of you have is, you know, is is this worth the, you know, seven hundred dollars when it goes back on retail, when uh, the, all the distributors get them back in? Is it worth the seven hundred fifty? I would say absolutely. If you are planning on doing any sort of recording or anything like that, uh, you know, if you're just planning on, on noodling at home or something like that, you know, just go and get yourself a budget guitar. But if you actually plan on doing something with it, even if it's something minor, like doing some home recordings or something like that, then I would say that, you know, something like this will help to take you to the next level. The guitar is not going to do it all for you. That's one of the things that you have to learn. You know, I thought, you know, that I'll be, be able to get sounds that I've never gotten before. And with the and with the Floyd Rose tremolo, yes, you know, it, it, to, to some respect. But in all honesty, all of the technique, I see a lot of people who are fans of Eddie Van Halen think that that his sound comes directly from the guitar. From th this his particular series of guitars. And the thing I can tell you is that it will help in a very small way, but in many ways, this is going to sound, except for the hum and you know some, some of the things that we discussed before, it is not going to sound different from, say, that of a Gibson Les Paul. You know, uh, Unless it is that you have one of these really keen ears that it is I don't have. I just saw um, somebody that I watch every now and then, Music is When. Tyler Lawson, uh, who goes and talks about gear and does funny little things. I also like KDH as well. Is it KDH? I believe it's KDH is the other guy I end up watching in terms of guitar stuff. And, um, you know, he was end up doing a knockoff of the uh, of the uh, sitar guitar that, you know, is like $5,000 or the, or the pedal that's like $5,000 and then trying to $30 knockoff of it. And I was like, I don't hear the difference. So, you know, in terms of tone, you know, I don't think you're going to hear that much difference from that of another $700 guitar. The thing I can say, however, that really sets this apart from, in terms of tone with, from that of my, um, my old Ibanez RX series is that with the clean tones, it is immaculately clean. And that right there will really, you know, change the way things are with overdrive and all that other stuff and give you a much better sound in terms of that. So in terms of that, is that necessarily an EVH thing? Not really. That's more of a quality kind of thing. That's definitely a quality thing. And so, you know, and plus not having the hum as well that you hear from other guitars when they're not being played coming through the amp, you don't have it. It almost... Well, this is again, this is something that I've never heard anybody else say, but it's almost like this this guitar has an internal noise gate. And so I don't know if that's a common thing or not, or what it is. It could be just a basic thing with the humbuckers being raised and all that stuff. That could possibly be it. Um, but yeah, this this guitar right here. I would have to say, you know, um, even though I'm planning on getting a second guitar, you know, which uh, again is a Chipson, you know, but, you know, even if it was, you know, a high end Les Paul, I would still say that this guitar will probably be my daily driver for practice, recording and all that stuff. But when the Chipson comes in, you will see it reviewed on this channel and you will see it pop up and being played every now and then. It's not just going to sit sit on a shelf, you know. I mean, heck, it's got the it's got the slash logo on it, you know. It's got to be seen. It's got to be played, and so you know the same is true with this one here. It's got to be played. And the thing that is great about this is that I remember an interview that I saw about these guitars, saying that uh, considering that it's unfinished, your natural oils get in there, and it makes it more comfortable to play over time. And that right there is something that the technology today cannot do. But a good fretboard can do that for you. All right. Thank you for joining me here today. And 
in the next coming weeks, we're going to be reviewing many things. We're going to be re reviewing the amp that I'm using. We're going to be review reviewing the Zoom G3. We're also going to be reviewing that Chipson that I mentioned er um, earlier. But uh, yeah, you know, I mean, if 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 you are leery about paying seven hundred dollars for a guitar, I will sell, I will tell you, this is a good investment, even though I got it for only four hundred and fifty. <laughs> All right, bye.